Blessings. Yeah. One body, one mind. One mind, one spirit. One spirit, one mind. Yeah. Gotta make the world feel it. One body, one mind. One mind, one spirit. One spirit, one mind. Yeah. Gotta make the world feel it. One body, one mind. Yeah. One mind, one spirit. One spirit, one mind. Yeah. Alright, all praises. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Today's uh, this morning's lesson is going to be called Porn is My Addiction. I know brothers and sisters are dealing with the porn. But we're going to deal with it today. We're going to deal with it this morning. I don't know who all watches uh, morning class, pro- mainly probably new people. So today will be a refresher for those that know, for those that don't know, and for those that know but you're still dealing with it. All right, we're going to go through it today. So let's get the law real quick. Let's get the law. Exodus 20. Let's get the law on it. Exodus 20 and 14. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 14. Uh Thou shalt not commit adultery. Adultery goes, when when you read the book of Leviticus 18. Let's get that real quick. The book of Leviticus 18. So some some may say, well, you know, I'm not married. Well, we 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 gonna deal with it. We gonna deal with it. Get Leviticus 18 and verse two. Leviticus chapter 18 and verse two. Mm-hmm. Speak unto the children of Israel. Come on. And say unto them, I am the Lord your God. Mm-hmm. After the doings of the land of Egypt, mm-hmm. wherein ye dwelt, ye shall ye not do. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, whether I bring you. Shall ye not do? Read. Neither shall ye walk in their ordinances. Ye shall do my judgment. Ye shall do my judgments and keep my ordinances. And keep my ordinances to walk therein. Uh-huh. I am the Lord your God. So Leviticus eighteen is going is going into unlawful marriages, unlawful lust, dealing sister on sister, a uh, woman on woman, man on man, dealing with a uh, uh, man and two women. Dealing with the mother and her daughter, a mother and her son. Dealing with the uh, uncle and his niece. Stuff like that. God says those are ordinances that I have not told you to do. Now, when you're dealing with porn, it's crazy. Leviticus 18, you can find a porn for each uh, law that the Lord told us to keep in Leviticus 18. And we're going to read them. We're going to read them. Jump down to verse 6. Leviticus 18 and verse 6. None of you shall approach to any that is near near of kin to him to uncover their nakedness. To uncover their nakedness. I am the Lord. Read. The nakedness of thy father or the nakedness of thy mother Uh shalt thou not uncover. So God says a child should not sleep with his mother. A child should not sleep with his father. Where can you find that at? Pornography. (laughs) You can find all of these categories. Read on. She is thy mother. Thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. Go ahead. The nakedness of thy father's wife. The nakedness of thy father's wife. Shalt thou not uncover. Uh Uh-huh. It is thy father's nakedness. So either your mother or your mother-in-law. Read. The nakedness of thy of thy sister. Come on. The the daughter of thy father. The nakedness of your sister. uh, uh, Brother on sister. You can find all this in the world of pornography. Read. Or a daughter of thy mother. Go ahead. Whether she be be born at the home or jump, born. Jump to verse 23. Verse 23. Go ahead. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast. Any what? Any beast. You can find that in the world of pornography. Come on. To defile thyself therewith. Verse 27. Verse 27. And, and we, we, like, like I said, we can go. Oh, you know what? Go to verse 18. Verse 18. Neither shalt thou take a wife. To her sister. To her sister. To vex her. Uh-huh. To uncover her nakedness. Go ahead. Beside the other in her lifetime. That, that's talking about threesomes. <laughs> For all you threesome lovers out there. Uh, verse um, hmm? 27? Yeah. Yeah. Verse 27. For all these abominations have the men of the land done. All these abominations. God says these are abominations. Read. 
which were before you, which were before you, and the land is defiled. And you'll and you'll be amazed. America is number one in the world of pornography. America, out of all the countries in the world, the number one country of pornography is America. So ain't no coincidence when the Lord says, verse 27, read verse 27 again. Verse 27, for all these abominations have the men of the land done. And the men of the land today have done, read. Which were before you, uh -huh. and the land is defiled. And America is defiled. America is defiled, read. Verse 28, that the land spew, spew not you out also mm -hmm. when ye defile it, read on. as it spewed out the nations that were before you. Read. For whosoever shall commit any of these abominations. Whosoever shall commit any of these abominations. Even the well, soul. Somebody might say, well, I don't sleep with animals, but I love threesomes. I don't do threesomes, but I, I love watching sleep. I love watching uh, an actor who's a so-called uh, brother sleeping with his sister. I love watching that stuff. God says, you sh whoever shall commit any of these abominations, read. For whosoever shall commit any of these abominations, uh -huh. even the souls that commit even them. Even the souls that commit them or commit themselves to them, read. Shall be cut off. Shall be cut off. From among their people. God says you're going to be cut off. Verse 30. Verse 30. Therefore, you shall keep mine ordinance mm -hmm. that ye commit not any one of these abominable customs. God says, don't do it. Don't commit any of these abominable customs. We shouldn't be watching this stuff. We shouldn't be exposing our brain, our spirit to these types of abominable customs. And we're going to go into what happens when we do expose ourselves to these customs. And then we become servants to these customs. We become addicts to these customs. And we die because of these customs. Read. Which were committed before you, mm. and that ye defile not yourselves therein. Go ahead. I am the Lord your God. God says, don't defile yourself. Go back to Exodus 20. Go back to Exodus 20 and read that again. Exodus chapter 20, verse 14. Go ahead. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Mm. That's a, thou shalt not commit adultery. Go to Matthew. Go to the book. Of, and then we're going to pull that first video up. Go to the book of Matthew, chapter 5, and verse 27. Matthew, chapter 5, and verse 27. You have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not commit adultery, but I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after uh -oh. her. <laughs> whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her, read. Hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. Ain't that what we do when we watch porn? We look at women, a, a woman looking at men and lusting. God says that's adultery. Christ said you have just committed adultery in your mind, in your heart. Read on. And if but, that, but but you see what Christ he rebukes you, but then he give you a solution. Verse twenty nine. And if thy right eye offend thee, if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out, pluck it out, and cast it from thee. Go ahead. For it is it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. God says, whatever causing you to be damned, let it go. Cast it away. You better find out a way to get rid of that. Uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Get rid of that uh, impurity. Get rid of it. Let it go. Give me the first video. So we're going to go over this thing. Give me the first video. This is, uh, what did I say? It's all, it's all cut up. Let me get that. Put it up myself. It's uh, how porn damages and changes the brain. So we're going to watch this whole video. 
We're going to watch this whole video. How porn damages and changes the brain. Go ahead and play that thing. How porn changes the brain. Neurons that fire together, wire together. Just like other addictive substances, porn floods the brain with dopamine. That rush of brain chemicals happening over and over again rewires the brain's reward pathway, ultimately changing the makeup of the viewer's brain. This can result in an increased appetite for porn. Yep, you heard that right. Porn physically changes your brain. One of the most exciting developments in our understanding of the brain in the last two decades is the discovery of something called neuroplasticity. Neuro meaning brain and plasticity meaning changeability. In other words, scientists have discovered that your brain is a lot like a never ending game of Tetris. So Constantly. stop, pause it. So the scientists say that porn physically changes your brain. Porn physically changes your brain. Watch this, get Ephesians 4. Get Ephesians 4 and verse 22. It says porn physically changes your brain. Watch this. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 22. Go ahead. That ye put off concerning the former conversation, uh -huh. the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful. The old man is corrupt, read. According to the deceitful lust, read. And be renewed in the spirit. In the what? In the spirit. In the spirit of your mind. Of your mind. <laughs> the Bible says your spirit is here. <laughs> <laughs> in the spirit of your mind we just the, the, the scientists say porn changes changes what the uh, uh, the, the, the physical aspect of your brain of your mind <laughs> but then we wonder why spirit ain't right your spirit ain't right cause you know you watch this stuff that's changing the aspect of your brain God, so you got to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Go back to the video. Go back to the video. <laughs> Go back to the video. Laying down new pathways based on your experience. To explain how it works, brain science constantly laying down new meaning brain and plasticity meaning changeability in other words scientists have discovered that your brain is a lot like a never-ending game of Tetris constantly laying down new pathways based on your experience to explain how it works brain scientists have a saying, neurons that fire together, wire together. If you're wondering what a neuron is and why it's on fire, here's what that means. A neuron is a brain cell. And when brain cells get activated at the same time by something you see or hear or smell or whatever, they release chemicals that help strengthen the connection between those neurons. For example, when you eat something delicious, your brain releases dopamine, a chemical that makes you feel good. Or if dopamine. you hold hands with someone hold you that. care about. And yes, that is a real brain, brothers and sisters. <laughs> that is a real brain it says when you do something that you like your brain releases dopamine dopamine is the feel 
good. What's that? The feel good hormone, I believe, is a hormone. Hey, look up dopamine. I did a class with this last year. Dopamine, oxycodin. Is it oxycodin? Oxytocin, I think it's called. Oxytocin. Thank you. Oxytocin. Look up dopamine. Let's see what dopamine is. Thank you. Uh oh damn, this is like the real version. Sheesh. That is a decarboxylated. <laughs> Go down. Okay, here it is right here. Uh examples on the web. The body releases dopamine, which gives us a kind of mental and physical high. Go down. They got synonyms or something. That's it, right? I don't worry about it. All right, so dopamine is what they call the feel good hormone. Makes you feel good. I want you to make me feel good. I don't know if you ever seen that movie, um, Monsters Ball, or Holly Berry. Ah, I know, I know Judah seen it. I know Judah seen it. Monsters Ball with Holly Berry. When she told the uh, white Billy Bob, I've never seen the movie, man. You, you see, I know you see the movie. Yes, when her son died, her son died, and she told the brother, she told, she told the Edomite, I want you to make me feel good. Then they end up having sex right there. Ah, don't watch it, though, but it's a crazy movie, crazy movie. And he's racist as hell. Go back to the video. Like I'm talking to a doggone. Yeah, you Levi and that brother over there is uh, Zebulon. He don't know. He don't know what the hell. He don't know what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, bro. Put a video up. Go back to the video, bro. <laughs> Your brain releases a chemical called oxytocin, which helps you bond with people. So, if every time you went to visit your Uncle Carl, he gave you a big hug and then took you out for ice cream, you'd probably start feeling pretty great about Uncle Carl. Since your brain would build pathways connecting Uncle Carl with feeling happy and loved. You have these kinds of brain pathways for all sorts of things. Riding a bike, eating a sandwich, and walking the dog. And when a person looks at porn, their brain creates new pathways for that too. Just like other addictive substances, porn floods the brain with dopamine. But since the brain gets overwhelmed by the constant overload of chemicals that comes with consistent porn use, it fights back by taking away some of its dopamine receptors. Watch this, y'all. Listen up. are like tiny ears on the end of a neuron that hear dopamine's message. With fewer receptors, even if the brain is putting off some putting off the same level levels of dopamine in response to porn the user can't feel dopamine's effect y'all hear that stop much. pause it so it says after a period of time your brain what is it your brain shuts off something shuts off the receptors so it feels like you're not getting the same effect because it's too much of an overload. So your brain says, you know what? Too, something's going on. Something's happening. Let me shut these receptors off, these dopamine receptors that make me feel good, and let me shut them off. Even though the brain is still releasing dopamine, you are not feeling the effects of the same pleasure that you once got. So what happens is, instead of the girl on man porn, now you got to turn it up a notch. Now you got to go to something more extreme because those dopamine, that dopamine for girl on boy porn, don't do it for you no more. Now you got to go to 
girl on girl. That don't do it for you no more. Now you got to go to man on man. That don't do it. Now you got to go to man on animal or orgies. Tell you, it's a it's a level up with Satan, man. It's a level. Once you go down that rabbit hole, I'm telling you, it's hard to get out. Go back to the video. Finish the video. As a result, the porn they were looking at doesn't seem as arousing or exciting. And many porn users go hunting for more porn or more hardcore porn to get the effect the old porn used to offer. As a frequent porn user's brain acclimates to the new levels of dopamine flooding through it, regular activities that would normally set off a burst of dopamine and make the person feel happy are not strong enough to register much anymore leaving the user feeling down or uneasy whenever they go for a while without looking at porn. That's one reason why pornography can be so addictive. Once addiction sets in, the user has a whole new set of problems because addiction damages the part of the brain that helps you think things through. Oh, fuck. Good. So I said, you, you're not a, a, uh, a good thinker. You become a horrible problem solver. You become a horrible brother, a horrible sister, a horrible husband, a horrible wife. When you let that porn dictate your life, it changes every aspect of your characteristics. Give me Romans chapter 8. They're almost 8 and 12. So you got to let the porn go. Let it go. Let the twerk videos go. Romans chapter 8 and verse 12. Read. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors. Debtors. Not, debtors. Not to the flesh. Not to the flesh. To live after the flesh. Not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. Verse 13. Verse 13. For if ye live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh. Ye shall die. Ye shall what? Ye shall die. Let's get the flesh. Give me uh, Galatians. The Bible said if you live after the flesh, you will die. Galatians 5, 19. Galatians chapter 5, verse 19. Mm Mm-hmm. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Now the works of the flesh read, which are these? Which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, uh, lasciviousness, uh, I- idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, zealousness. Slow down. It says, uh, "Where you at? What verse you at? Twenty. Verse twenty. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, various emulations. Read. Wrath, strife. Of uh, verse nineteen. I missed it. Verse nineteen. Verse nineteen. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest, uh-huh. which are these. Adultery. Adultery, read that in Matthew 5, Exodus 20, read. Fornication. Fornication. Uncleanliness. Uncleanness. Lasciviousness. Lasciviousness. These are the works of the flesh. So when you're dabbling in these things, it changes your whole mindset of the world. It changes your mindset of your priorities in life. So now your priorities is not getting your spirit right. Your priorities is making time to watch that porn. And then when you get married, you're wondering why you want your your your, your wife to do flipping and 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 hanging upside down on the chandeliers, and all <laughs> you want to be tied up and that, that that's crazy. They did a study on that, and and, and if we got time, Lord, we'll 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 put a video. We'll put a video. Majority of what y'all see, and Bishop go over it all the time when he when he talk about this. Ninety percent of women don't want to do what y'all Negroes see porn porn stars do. Ninety <laughs> percent. Your wife is not a porn star. You expect her to do what the porn stars do because you watch porn every doggone day. Sister, your husband ain't a porn star. 
<laughs> you expect your husband to have a him in that horn right there. Him in that horn right there. You want to have one of these because you see the porn star. <laughs> you see the porn star one of these hanging. Now you want your husband to have this and you mad at him. You mad at him because he ain't no damn porn star. Can't be like that. You got to be renewed in your mind. You got to be renewed in your mind. Go back to Romans 8. <laughs> Go back to Romans 8. Romans 8 and verse 12. Read that again. Romans chapter 8 and verse 12. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. To live after the flesh, read. For if ye live after the flesh, mm -hmm. ye shall die. Don't live after the flesh, that fornication, that uncleanness. Don't live after that uh, uh, adultery. Don't live after the flesh. Don't give in to what your flesh wants. Because, I mean, and, and you see this a lot when brothers first come in. Brothers and sisters, because sisters deal with porn too. Brothers deal with porn. And you see when they, when they usually it's the strongest when you first come in the truth. First come in the truth and them urges coming because you fighting and fighting and fight. And when you was in the world, you watch porn three times a day on your job site, at work, <laughs> in your cubicle. You you got saved tabs on your phone. You got saved video. You got DVD collections at the house, at the crib, in the in, in the uh in the garage, in the attic. And then you come into the truth. And you know when, when it says in, in the first, wisdom shall walk with you crooked ways until she have proven you and found you worthy. All that stuff's going to happen when you first come in. And you got to fight that thing. You got to fight it. And then after a period of time, you fighting, you fighting, you fighting, years after years. And then you may go a few years without watching porn. You may go three, two years, four years. And then you get that urge. That urge come back. Let you know we still got a lot to work on. Still got a lot to work on. Go back to the video. Go back to the video. Of the brain that helps you think things through to make good choices. The brain's limit setting system. For more than 10 years, studies have shown that drug addictions can cause the brain's frontal lobes to start shrinking. While frontal lobe sounds really technical, basically it's the part of the brain that controls logical problem solving and decision making. You see that? It says but porn recent studies have causes the frontal lobe to shrink. And your problem solving and your critical thinking skills go out the window. Now you're doing things that's that's not even a, not even uh what what's the word? You're doing things that that's going against your own morality. That's not your characteristic. That's not who you are. You know, you know people uh you, you what's it called? What's the word? Ah, I can't think of the word. But basically, you're doing things that is that is not common for your personality. You're like, wait a minute, what? Did he, what, she, he doing this? Damn, what's going on? Now your whole personality is changing. Now your whole uh, uh, morality, your, your morals are changing now. And you know what's crazy? We try to warn brothers and sisters about this. And then we see them changing. Like, bro, everything all right, sis? Everything good? You know, you 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 starting to, you know, you're not yourself these days. You can't hide that. <laughs> it's noticeable. You can't hide that. Something's going on. And in this uh aspect of it, it could come from watching too much porn, watching porn in general. Watching explicit things. It says it shrinks your frontal lobe. Shrinks it. Now your decision making all jack your uh, decision making all jacked up. Your critical thinking all jacked up. You can't allow scriptures no more. Something ain't right. 
You can't deal with your wife no more. Something ain't right. You 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 quit the 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 pop off. You, you're not patient no more. What's going on? Something ain't right. And I'm gonna tell you, you know who you know who pick up on that stuff? Women. Sisters pick up on it. The whoa, 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 something ain't right. He didn't kiss me this morning. <laughs> he didn't hug me before he went to work. What's going on? Sisters pick up on that thing. Hey, you wise, y'all. Hey, if y'all pick up on it, hey. Hey, you better speak. Save your husband from destruction. Go to Surah 1830. Save your husband from destruction. Husband, if you see that thing, save your wife from destruction. Save your wife from destruction. Uh, Surah 18 and verse 3. Surah chapter 18 and verse 3. Who governeth the world with the palm of his hand, and all things obey his will. For he is the king of all. What, Surah 18 and 30? Oh, 18 and 30. I'm sorry. Yeah. I heard three. Sur uh, Surah chapter 18, verse 30. Read. Go not after thy lust. Go not after thy lust. But refrain but thyself. Stop yourself. Refrain means to hold back. Read. From thine appetite. Your appetite may be little girls. Your appetite may be little boys. Your appetite may be a pit bull with peanut butter. That may be your appetite. Your, your appetite may be goats. I ain't gonna send no names. I ain't gonna send no chops. But your appetite may be goats. <laughs> you gotta stop that stuff, man. You gotta stop it. Your appetite may be uh what was it called? Uh stepmama porn. Your appetite may be. White uh, milfs, what is it, mother? Uh, yeah, milfs. Your appetite may be uh, white women porn. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's the truth. Your appetite may be uh, um, uh, what is it? Uh, BBW big black woman porn. Your appetite may be that. God says you got to refrain yourself from your appetite. Refrain yourself. Read on. Verse thirty one. If thou givest thy soul the desire that please her. If you give your soul the desire that please her, read. She will make thee a laughing stock to thine enemies mm. that malign thee. You got to understand. And we're going to go into it. Matter of fact, I'll put it up right now. I'm going to send this to you, Omar. I'm going to pull it up right now. Oh, she, goodness gracious. You got to be careful you type in porn in Google. Hey, that's, cra that's crazy. You can type in porn in Google and you will get a million pages. And all you got to do is click on it. One click of the mouse. That's how, I'm you, that, that's how um, easy it is to fall into death. That's how easy it is. I'm telling you, Satan is here, man. America is... Babylon. America is the damn uh, house of Satan. Uh, let me see. Uh, trying to do how much? How much money? Oh, capital. Capital. America porn capital. America porn. Uh, what's the word? I'm trying to look up how much money they make. Revenue. Thank you. Revenue. Say the wrong thing on here. It's over. All right. Let me see. Oh, here we go. I'll read it. It says, oh, goodness. It says, porn can have a bigger economic influence in the U.S. How much money does the porn industry make? Now, mind you, y'all, we, uh, we are contributing to this porn industry. Watch this. Estimated U.S. entertainment industry revenue in 2018. Porn, lowest state, $6 billion. $6 billion! NBA, $7.4 billion. Hollywood, $11.1 billion. NFL, $14 billion. Porn, mid-estimate, $15 billion. Dollars. 
fifteen billion dollars. That's the porn entertainment industry revenue, and that's just in 2018. We keeping this place afloat, y'all. Because we love sin so much. We love sin so... Do you understand if every black and Hispanic and Native American man stopped watching porn, it wouldn't be no porn business. Crip the whole economy. And that goes for everything. Just like we stopped watching NBA or NFL. Hell, we stopped buying on the Sabbath. We'll cripple the economy, man. Wouldn't be no Donald Trump. Wouldn't be no Biden. They'd have to put Bishop up there. <laughs> Wouldn't be none of that. <laughs> uh, when I say get uh, reverse 31 again. Ecclesiasticus, what's the rock? Chapter 18 and verse 30. Go not after thy lust, uh -huh. but refrain thyself from thine appetites. But refrain thyself from thy appetites, read. If thou givest thy soul the desire that please her, mm -hmm. she will make thee a laughing stock to thine enemy. She will make thee a laughing stock. A laughing stock to thine enemies that malign thee. Tell you, man, that, that's a blot of your name, man. That's a blot on your name. And you know what's crazy? Give me that scripture where it says, um, uh, let me see, Sirach 23, verse 19. Sirach 23, 19. Like I said, when we first come in, a lot of us dealt with this stuff. Yo, when I first came in the truth, I dealt with it. Like my first year or two, I dealt with it. I'm like, damn, man, I, I got to stop this. I got to stop it. I'm going to tell you what scripture made me stop. This the scripture that made me stop cold turkey. <laughs> Sirach 23 and 19. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 23 verse 19. Such a man only feareth the eyes of men. The eyes of men. And knoweth not that the eyes of the Lord are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. The Bible say the eyes of the Lord are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. Read. Beholding. Beholding. Watching. All the ways of men. All the ways of men. Watch this. And considering the most secret parts. The mind. So you got to understand when you watching your porn and you got your lotion lined up with your sock <laughs> or your towel or for sisters, I'm going to be real, sisters be using uh, mechanical devices. I'll just say that. You got your mechanical devices lined up. Brothers got their uh, lotion, their jergens. <laughs> the brothers know. Lined up. The Bible say God is watching you. Oh, man, that give me the, hey, that give me the creep. That give me the chills. Would you do it if your mama was watching you? Would you do it if your father was watching you? Hell, you wouldn't do it. That's why the majority of the time when you watch your porn, you look over your shoulder. And make sure nobody behind me. Right, you lock all the doors. You know this your house. <laughs> nobody in the house. You turn off all the lights. Or you go in the bathroom. And you lock that door. You make sure you lock that door. You lock the your room door. And then you lock the bathroom door that's in the room. That's how secretive you want to be. Or you wait till everybody go to sleep and you get on a laptop. And then you turn the uh you turn the lighting of the screen. All the way down. <laughs> you turn the light into the screen. You turn the volume all the way to two so that you can still hear, but can't nobody else hear. <laughs> Read verse 10, 19 again. Verse 19. Read. Such a man only feareth the eyes of men uh -huh. and knoweth not that the eyes of the Lord are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. 10,000 times brighter than the sun. Read. Beholding all the ways of men. Beholding all the ways of men and considering the most secret parts, he knew all the things ever, ever they were created. So it says he considering all the secret parts. You got to ask yourself, if Christ walked in the room, <laughs> would you be proud or ashamed of what you are doing? You got to ask yourself that. If Christ walked in the room. If Gabriel approached, if Gabriel just walked, boom, 
what are you doing? <laughs> if Gabriel just appeared to you at that moment, <laughs> what excuse would you have to give? What excuse would you have? It wouldn't be none. But I bet your Negro would make one up. Oh, oh, I don't know what he's doing. I don't know what these candles doing. <laughs> I don't know who put these candles out. <laughs> I don't know why Keith Sweat going on in the background. You making a date with yourself. Goodness gracious. Uh, go back to the video. We almost done with that video. Go back to the video, bro. <laughs> we got to move on. Go back to the video. Found that it's not just drugs that cause that kind of damage. The same problems show up with other kinds of addictions, such as overeating, internet addictions, and sexual compulsions. And here's the really scary part. The more porn a person looks at, the more severe the damage to the brain becomes and the more difficult it is to break free. But there's good news too. Neuroplasticity works both ways. That means that the damage to the brain can be undone when someone gets away from unhealthy behavior. Stop! <laughs> you see that? He said, but wait, there's help. The damage to the brain that is being done can be reversed. All you have to do is get away from the addiction. That's all you got to do. All you got to do is stop watching the porn. It's very simple. Just stop. Get 1 Corinthians 3.16. Get 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16. Read. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God? God says you are the temple. You are the, our bodies are, is the temple. Read. And that the spirit of God dwelleth in you? And the spirit of God dwelleth in us. Read. If any man defile the temple of God. If any man defile that temple. Or him, destroy. Read. Him shall God destroy. God said he going to put you to death. Read. For the temple of God is holy. The temple of God is holy. Holy means to be set apart. Holy means to be sanctified. The temple of God is holy, read. Which temple ye are. Which temple ye are. So the solution is all you got to do is turn away from it. That's the solution. That's the solution. Romans 6. Romans 6 and verse 12. Romans chapter 6 and verse 12. Come on. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. Let not sin reign therefore. Read it again. Let not sin therefore no, reign. No, read it right. Let, Let not, not sin, sin therefore. What, what Bible you got, man? You got a. Uh... My Bible said, let not sin reign therefore in your mortal body. That ye should obey it in the lust thereof. God says, don't let sin reign. Don't let sin be in control of you. Don't let sin be on the uh, uh, hierarchy of God. You put sin before God. You put sin before righteousness. That time watching porn, that time uh, uh, doing those abominable acts, abominations, you could be doing other things like putting in the work. You could be reading. You could be watching. It's a million videos on YouTube of Israel United in Christ, literally. I remember when I first came in the truth, I used to watch videos two, three times before I knew it came out. I used to go through videos in a week. So all the videos were watched. And then a new one would come out. Today, hell, we got 200 videos dropping a day. 500 videos dropping a day. It's not even, I can't even keep up with all the videos dropping today. That's how much content God has put upon the spirits of our leadership. It's so much content of righteousness in that day. We ain't going to have no excuse. We're going to have no excuse to be idle on the internet in that day. Ain't no excuse. 
It's so much righteous content now. Uh, where we at? Go, go to the next one. Oh, let me see. Should be a pornography definition. Pornography. The depiction of erotic behavior as in pictures or writing intended to cause sexual excitement. Materials such as books or, or photographs that depicts erotic behavior and is intended to cause sexual excitement. Go down. Get James 1.15 first. Let, let's read that. James chapter 1 and verse 15. Mm -hmm. Then when lust had uh, come. Start at verse 13. Verse, James chapter 1 verse 13. Yeah, I think that's it. Go ahead. Let no man say when he is tempted, mm -hmm. I am tempted of God. Let no man say that God tempted me. God made me click on this porn. God made me go to the triple X store <laughs> and buy this, uh, buy 10 DVDs, get 10 for free. <laughs> Poor read. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Read on. Neither tempteth he any man. Neither tempteth he any man. Read. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. Drawn away of his own lust. Read. And enticed. And is what? And enticed. And enticed. Read. Then. When lust hath conceived, then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. It bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. And when sin is finished, bringeth forth death. So it said, when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. You lusting after it. Oh, man, I can't wait to get off. Hell, it's times where, and brothers and sisters know what I'm talking about. You be at work, think about the thing all day. I can't wait to get home. I can't wait to get home and get a release. And your coping method of captivity is porn. Your coping method of stress is porn. Your coping method of, of agitation is porn. Or you getting your husband back, you getting your wife back, or oh, she made me mad, you know what the hell with this? I'm just going to go watch some porn. And I ain't going to have sex with her. I'm going to get it in with myself. And you wonder why your marriage is, 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 is going the way it's going. Wonder why your, your, your proven process is going the way it's going. Uh, go back. Nope. Go to the next one. I'm, I'm going to probably see you another one, Omar. But right now I can't find a good one. Go to Wikipedia. Go to the Wikipedia. We got to let that porn go, y'all. Wikipedia. Can you read that, officer? Pornography, often shortened to porn, is the, is the portrayal of sexual subject matter for the exclusive purpose of sexual arousal. Pornography, may be presented in a variety of media, including magazines, animation, writ writing, film, video, and video games. The term does not include live exhibitions like sex shows and striptease. The primary subjects of present-day pornograph pornographic de depictions are pornographic models who pose for still photographs and pornographic actors who engage in film. Hey, real quick, when it says uh, animation, animation, animation. Y'all know I'm about to go with this, right? You anime freaks out there. A lot of y'all is anime freaks. Some of that stuff you can't watch, man. Like uh, what is that? Uh, Sally Deadly, uh, Sally Deadly, Seven Deadly Sins. You can't watch that stuff all the time. Your spirit ain't right yet. 
You got to put that stuff on the back. You got to put some of them animes on the back burner. A lot of them animes you got to put on the back burner. Spirit ain't right yet. Next thing you know, you're watching anime porn. Watching uh, Lois, Lois and Peter. <laughs> your boy, your boy, I'm watching cartoon porn now. Watching uh, 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 Homer. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you watching Homer Simpson porn. You watching Bleach porn. Naruto porn. I know what I'm talking about, man. Hey, I'm telling you, y'all, y'all know. Y'all out there. I know it. You got to let the anime porn go. You got to let it go. <laughs> God of high school porn. You got to let it go. Let that stuff go. Go back to Wikipedia, bro. Go back to Wikipedia. <laughs> go back to Wikipedia. Go ahead. The primary subjects of present day pornographic depictions are pornographic models who pose for still photo photographs and pornographic actors who engage in filmed sex acts. You know? Various groups within society have considered depictions of a sexual nature, immoral, addictive, and nauseous, labeling them pornographic and attempting to have them suppressed under obscenity, obscenity laws, censored or made illegal. Such grounds and even the definition of porn, pornograph, por, pornography have deferred in various historical, cultural, and natural context. Social attitudes towards the discussion and presentation of sexuality have become more tolerant in Western countries, and legal definition of obscenity have become more limited, beginning in 1969 with Blue Movie by Andy Warhol the first adult erotic film depicting explicit sexual intercourse to receive wide theoretical release in the United States. Scroll up. It was followed by the golden age of porn in 1969 through 1984, in which the best quality pornographic, pornographic film became part of mainstream culture. A growing industry of the production and consumption of pornography developed in the latter half of the 20th century. Go ahead. The introduction of home video. Hey, you know what? I just want to say because you know I'm reading the comments on the on this chat here, and uh, you, you know I don't really do this, but uh, I don't know somebody. I'm, I'm gonna tell you how, how Israel. I don't know if this dude is Israel or uh, East. I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna read this real quick. I'm going to read this real quick. Oh, never mind. I blocked him. <laughs> Can't read it no more. Never mind. Go back to the Wikipedia. <laughs> I blocked his ass. Go back. <laughs> Go back. Read that. <laughs> A growing his industry uh, for the production and consumption of pornography Go developed ahead. in the latter half of the 20th century. The introduction of home video and the internet saw a boom in the worldwide porn industry and g- that generates billions of dollars that annually. what? Billions. Billions of dollars, read Annually. Annually. Yearly. This, in- this porn industry generates billions. If you don't think that this is necessary to teach, you is the damn devil. Let me be real with you. This is a billion-dollar industry. Off of the backs of blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. Read. Commercialized pornography accounts for over for over 2.5 billion in the United States alone, including the production of various media and associated productions and services. The porn industry is between 10 to 12 billion in the U.S. in 2006. The world pornography revenue is $97 billion. 90, goodness. God, bro, read that again. What did I just say? The world pornography revenue was $97 billion. $97 billion. I want y'all to understand something. 
this world is revolving, is evolving because of our sin. This world is, is, is what's what I'm looking for? It's benefiting because of our sin. If blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans would get out of that stuff, stop dabbling in that stuff, if we can stop watching porn, we can stop selling drugs. If we can stop watching porn, we can, we can stop killing each other. If we can stop killing each other, we can keep God's commandments to the best of our ability. We can keep the Sabbath day. We can stop eating pork. We can love our, uh, love our wives, love our, love our husbands, love our children, love each other, and ultimately love God, love Christ. It all goes hand in hand. It's all connected together. That's why Christ said, go sin no more. Sin no more. Keep going. Go back. Uh, let's see, $97 billion. This industry employs thousands of performers along with support and production staff. Go ahead. It is also followed by dedicated industry publications and trade groups, award shows, as well as the mainstream press, private organization, the watchdog groups, government agencies, and political organizations. Videos involving non-sensual content and cyber sex trafficking. Cyber sex trafficking have been hosted on popular pornography sites in the 21st century. Go down. We're going to go down to America. Go down. Go down. Go down. Don't click on that. You got to just go down. Come on. Go down. Should be something about America. Go down. Oh, you see that? That was in, uh, was it, Oil Lamp Artifact Depicting Cortes Mor Ferrum? That's all the way back in, uh, what is that, uh, ancient, I think it's like ancient Babylon or something, ancient Rome? Yeah, and we're going to bring that out too. Go down. Because we think there's a new thing on the earth. We think porn is something new. Go down. Classification, you should be able to go to uh, America. Uh, commercialism, economics, go down. We already went over economics. It's a Twelve billion, nineteen billion dollar American economic go down. Laws and regulations. Right, that's what I wanted. Laws and regulations. I read it. The legal status of pornography varies widely from country to country. Most countries allow at least some form of pornography. In some countries, softcore pornography is considered tame enough to be sold in general stores or to be shown on TV. Hardcore pornography, on the other hand, is usually regulated. The production and sell, and to a slightly lesser degree, don't just go up a little bit. Up, I mean down, whatever. Yeah, yeah, because I, I want to show that map. The production and sale, and to a slightly lesser degree, the possession of child pornography is illegal in almost all countries. And some countries have restrictions on, on pornography depicting violence, for example, rape pornography or animal pornography. I want y'all to look at this, this map. Is there a way you can blow that map up? Thank you. I want y'all to look at this map. The green is where pornography is legal. The green. I want y'all to look at this. Look at this. The green is where pornography is legal. The yellow is where pornography is legal, but under some restrictions. The red is where pornography is illegal. I want y'all to look at this. And the gray is unknown. The gray is unknown. I want y'all to look at that. Look at the country where everything is legal. It's all green in America. It's all green. And you see the countries where porn is illegal. You got some parts of Africa. Now you see, now I want you to blow that little place up. You see that little spot of green? Do you click on that? Can, can you zoom in on that? No, zoom in. That, that's as far as you can go? All right. But it's a little green dot. I think that's Israel today. 
Is that Israel? It's a little green dot where you can barely see it. And everything else surrounding it is illegal. But in that little green dot, that's Israel today. That's the land of Israel today, so-called the land of Israel today. That's legal. Pornography is legal. Everywhere America has its hand in, pornography is legal. Give me that Deuteronomy. Let me see. Deuteronomy? Or is it Leviticus? Might be Leviticus. Let me see something. Uh, Deuteronomy. Uh, might be Leviticus 19. Leviticus. Yeah, let me see. What Leviticus 19, 29 say? Yep. Read that. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 29. Mm -hmm. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. It says, do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. It's talking about dress code as well as literal prostitution. Do not prostitute our daughter to cause her to be a whore. We should be making sure our daughters and sons are raised up to know that this type of stuff is an abomination in the eyes of God. Read. Le hey, because at school, they know about porn. Elementary school, hell, I knew about porn in elementary school. So you best believe little kids today know about porn. In yes, your little girl, your little boy, that's still in, in, in the third grade, second grade, they know about porn. They may not talk to you about it. They may not express their interest. Middle school, high school, you best believe they know about porn. Read. Lest the land fall to whoredom. Lest the land fall to whoredom, and that's what America has fallen to. America always been whoredom. Read. And the land become full of wickedness. And the land become full of wickedness. And that's what's going on. Go, go back to the map. Go back to the map. Look at that, y'all. I want y'all to pay attention to that. Look at America. Look at America. Where the majority of Israel resides in America. Where we are as the sand of the sea. That green is because of us. I'm going to be real with you. That green that you see on the screen is because of us. We contribute to the $19 billion industry in America. Get uh, Romans 6 and... Did we read Romans 6 and 12? Get Romans 12 and 13. Let me see what that say. Romans chapter 12 and verse 13. Go ahead. Disrupt, disrupting to the necessity of saints. Uh, Romans 12 and 13. Uh, yeah. Get Romans, 12 and 13. Romans chapter 12 verse 2. Go ahead. And be not conformed to this world. Go ahead. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be not conformed to this world. But be ye transformed in the renewing of your mind. That's what we got to do. We got to transform our minds, man. We got to let this stuff go. This is something that plagues all of us. Whether it did in the past or whether it's doing it now. We are plagued with this type of atrocity. Because that's what it is. Give me that. Where's that in uh, Wisdom of Solomon? No, was it Wisdom of Solomon? Where's that Wisdom of Solomon? Get uh, Romans 5 and 8 real quick while I look for this. Romans chapter 5 and verse 8. But God commanded his love towards us in that while we, while we were yet sinners, uh -huh. Christ died for us. Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. We shall be saved through, from wrath through Christ. Proverbs chapter 30 verse 19. The way of an eagle in the air the way of a... Uh, start at verse 18. Verse 18. There be three things which are too wonderful for me. Yea, four which I know not. 
The way of an eagle in the air. Part of um, King Solomon said, I know not the way of an eagle in the air. The way of a serpent upon a rock. The way of a serpent upon a rock. The way of a ship in the midst of the sea. The way of the ship in the midst of the sea. Now, Mimi says, yea, four, which I know not read. And the way of a man with a maid. And the way of a man with a maid. King Solomon said, I didn't dabble in that. <laughs> he didn't dabble with that. The way of a man is with his maid. Man, deal with his maid. He sounds, hey, that fourth I know not. Go back to Romans, uh, what I said, Romans 5 and 8? Yes, sir. Let me see, is I write a 3 or 5? Uh, let see something. Go to uh First Corinthians ten and thirteen. First Corinthians chapter ten and verse thirteen. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. Not suffered you to be tempted above that which you are able. This is something we gotta realize. Every temptation that we think we can't get over, God is letting you know that you are strong enough to overcome it. Why? Because you're going through it. If you can go through it, you can overcome it. Read verse 13 again. You know, because some people feel like, oh, you know, this sin that I'm, I'm dealing with is just the worst of the worst. Why me? Why am I going through this? You're going through it because you're strong enough to overcome. That's what you got to prove. You got to prove to the father that you got faith to overcome that thing because he's telling you, you can. How much belief do you have in God? He tell you you can overcome and you overcome. That's faith. That's belief. That's fight. That's fortitude. That's grit. Verse 13 again. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. It's common to man. But God is faithful. God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. God says he's faithful. He ain't going to put nothing on you that is impossible for you to overcome. Think about that. What kind of father would that be? I'm going to put you on a punishment that I know will be impossible for you to get through. The father said he going to. <laughs> we say he would not suffer you to be tempted above that which ye are able. Read. But we're with the temptation with also. With that same temptation that we're going through. Also make a way to escape. God says, I, I left you doors. You know, Cap Severe's always say some uh, tools on your duty belt. Well, is that what he say? Your tools on your belt. You got you got to use your tool, huh? Toolbox. Your toolbox. <laughs> the Lord give you tools to get out of situations. You just got to know them. You got to see them. Because he presents them every time you go through the temptation. But we so blindly, we so blindly induced and, and uh, uh, full of, of lust. Our frontal lobes done, done shrink, done shrunk so much. Well, we can't even see the doors that the Lord has opened for us to escape temptation. We don't even see it until afterwards. Then we said, oh, damn. Sister so-and-so called me. I should have picked up. Brother so-and-so told me to go on a fly mission. Why I didn't go? I chose to do this. Now you're behind, scared. Now you're looking for judgment. Read. Read it again. Verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. Go ahead. But will with the temptation also make a way to escape. With the temptation also make a way to escape. Read. That ye may be able to bear it. That ye may be able to bear it. The Lord said, whatever you're going through, I'm going to give you a way out. First Peter 5 and 8. First 
First Peter chapter five and verse eight. Be sober and vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil. Because your adversary, the devil. As a roaring lion. As a roaring lion. Walketh about, mm -hmm. seeking whom he may devour. And you know what's crazy? Uh, so, be sober, be vigilant. Vigilant means always on the watch. Vigilant. That means you are looking for danger at all times. All times. You know, at work, they got, they got uh, code systems that they tell us we should you know, be on. You got your yellow, you got your orange, you got your white, you got your black, you got your red. The yellow, I believe I may be mistaken. The yellow is the non-attentive person. Not watching. Don't give a dog on. White is just oblivious. Just think of white folks. Just oblivious to everything. Don't give a dog on what's going on. Orange is when you are attentive, when you always watching, always okay, man, always setting up scenarios in your mind of what can happen. You go into a store, you make sure you know where the exits are. You you go to a restaurant, you make sure you sit according to your escape route. Make sure okay, you sit here, I sit there, so I can see everything. I make sure okay, this is behind me, that right there, that right there. Where's the fire extinguisher? Where's the exit? There's emergency exit. That, that's living in orange. Some of us don't live, some of us just straight living white, just oblivious to it all. To the point where we will seek counsel. The counsel will tell you, hey, I don't think that's a good thing for you to do. I don't think that. We go against the counsel and then we fall into temptation. We go against the counsel, like, sis, I don't think you should do that, sis. Nah, sis, I don't think you should move there by yourself. Nah, sis, I don't think you should get this job right now and then you go against the council and then you call ring you know phones don't ring like that no more these days <laughs> like Shalom said what's going on oh, Captain Gad I just got something to tell you oh damn I was at my house and I was by myself and I was watching porn says wait a minute sir, did, did, not, did I tell you not to do it Told you not to move. We fall into temptation. Fall into temptation. Uh, get. Uh, let me see what Titus three and three say. What does say? Huh? Uh, yeah, get that. Titus chapter three and verse three. Because I want nobody to think that you know, yeah, we 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 going over this, but we was like that at one point. I was like that at one point. My first couple of years, and it's true. I was battling it, and still this day, the old man tells me to go back into that life. That old Negro. Hey, hey, you know, why don't you pull up some, pull up a. A music video on YouTube. <laughs> Ain't no harm in that. Ain't no harm in watching a WAP video. Yeah, but brothers know about that WAP video with uh, uh what's her name? Nicki Minaj and uh Meg Meg the Stop. What's her name? Hesada? Cardi B. Oh, see, you see, I got him. See, hey, it was a trap. It was a trap. <laughs> it was a trap. <laughs> Got him. It's all good. Hey, it's all good. Just repent, brother. Just repent. <laughs> so you got a uh, what, what's the chick? Nicki Minaj. <laughs> what's the other chick? Oh, well, what's the other chick name? You don't know? All right. You lying right now. So so now you lie. So now you're lying. Now you're lying on the Sabbath day. You're lying. What's the other chick? Uh, Black Black China. Black China. That's her name. Now y'all don't know. Uh, uh, stallion, black stallion, make the stallion. See, y'all brother, like y'all don't know now. Ain't that something? <laughs> Got him, brothers online. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all know what I'm talking about, sisters. Y'all too. You know, pull up a video. Next thing you know, you watching Pornhub. 
Hey, I'm going to tell you how I start, though. You be flipping through your Facebook, you know. Hey, you know you click on a video on Facebook, and then that video lead to 30 more videos, Mm -hmm. and then you now you on Facebook for three hours watching videos that you clicked on from one video. Y'all know what I'm talking about. That web. web. Now now you stuck. That's why they call it the web. Now you stuck. You done been trapped in the web. And that one video you see a chick twerking. Ow! Let me click on that video right there. Look at her. She thinks she need to repent. That's how brothers do. She need to repent. Look at her, them leggings on. She shouldn't be wearing them leggings. Look at her. I can see her breasts. Let me go to her picture so I can so I can build a class off of her picture. Let me go to her picture so I can teach my wife about this. Look at her. Look, look at her. She, she, look at her in that bathing suit. She got video. Look at her. She got videos of her dancing on TikTok. Let me look her up. <laughs> Let me look up, see what's going on. Oh, what? What? She she a porn star? Let me go to Pornhub and look her up. We rebuke the hell out of her. Next thing you know, you done got your socks and your jerkins out, your Bible under the bed, or you got the jerkins on top of the Bible. You don't put the lotion bottle on top of your pocket for. Hey, that's some, that's some, <laughs> that's some stuff. Go to Surah fourteen eleven. <laughs> You don't went, I'm telling you, you done got stuck in the web and you don't even know how to get out. <laughs> Give me that. Sirach or Ecclesiasticus chapter 14, verse 11. Go ahead. My son, mm-hmm. according to thy ability, do good to thyself. According to thy ability, do good to thyself, Reed. And give the Lord his due offering. God says, do good to yourself, man. Do good to yourself. We watching that point. I'm telling you, you are doing evil to your own body. You are diminishing the function of your brain. How are you going to teach the people when you can't even make uh, righteous decisions when you're alone? How are you going to teach the people on the street to turn away from sin, but when you get home to your lonely self, you can't even tell yourself not to watch porn. You can't even do it. God says, do good to yourself. Get the next one. I think we got a, uh, what we got next? The video, right? Yeah, get that. We almost done. Play that. Any road or railway these days, and you will, before long, see graffiti. Rarely is this scrawl on the wall in any way poetic. It might be profound, or even passionate, but probably not along the lines of, Ithonides is beautiful, and willingly takes it up the backside, which is inscribed on the rocks of Mount Hymettus, just above Athens, and dates from the 5th century BC. Shocked? Well, that is just the start of it. My name's Guy, and welcome to this It's History Symposium. Not a dry academic discussion of abstract ideas, but a symposium of the ancient Greek kind. A meeting to discuss and enjoy some raucous sexual ideas. While the wine may be flowing a little less freely than it did back then, I have no doubt that this will be nothing less than an eye-opening experience. Behind closed doors, men gathered at symposia for an evening of wild drinking from utensils that displayed explicit scenes. On these cups and bowls were satyrs, the half-man, half-beast followers of Dionysus, the god not only of wine, but ritual pleasure. The scene showed enormous erect penises engaged in every activity that was taboo in public and that, officially speaking, regular men did not indulge in. Masturbation, anal sex, group sex and sexual violence. Commentators suggest that the purpose of these symposia, which were all male gatherings apart from a solitary female flautist, was to test discipline. 
The satires and their exploits represented temptation. The drunkenness and collective arousal of the symposia themselves posed a hazard to resolve. Indeed, the ancient Greeks represented uncontrollable desire as Eros, a pesky, irritable child, and even their gods were not in control of their sexual destiny. Equally hazardous might have been the directions included in parts of the Greek magical papyri, a collection of spells, hymns and rituals from the 2nd century BC to the 5th century AD. They give advice on anointing the penis with weasel dung before intercourse, or with a blend of hawk dung, salt and plant extract. Rather them than me. Even outside these bawdy gatherings, ancient Stop. Greece was by heard that right? Ancient Greece, they used to put pig dung as lubricant. <laughs> I just want y'all to pay attention to that. Pig dung as lubricant. Go back to the video. Large, a sexually charged place, though there was some opposition from some quarters. The Stoics, for example, were a group of philosophers who taught that anything sexual was dangerously corrupting. Homosexuality was generally thought to be an ideal, among the ruling classes at least. It was believed that desiring boys could and should make you more manly. Stop! You Ancient Greece is said desiring boys should and make you more manly. Manly. Would y'all pay attention to what we got today, pornography? This is what it stems from. I mean, and it goes way back further than Greece as well, but we're going to talk about Greece today because the Greece is still ruling. The Greeks, the Romans, they still ruling today. America is wrong. Still today, the same people ruling today that said, when you desire young boys, it made you manly. And the same people allowing us to watch all the porn we want. Watch all the porn you want. And I do what I want. You know, that South Park episode. I do what I want. I'm a grown man. I watch all the porn I want. Go back to the video. Youthful male body exemplified by Adonis was the epitome of masculinity. But bulging pecs and meaty thighs were only the public representation of masculinity, usually in nude statue form. Nudity was considered completely natural, so much so, in fact, that men exercised with nothing on. The Greek word gymnos, which morphed into gymnasium, means naked. Uh oh! The prowess of Stop! Now, what are we, now, Bishop brain this out all the time. Deacons and captains brain this out all the time. Gymnos. Back then, they used to be what? Naked gymnasium. Give me the book of Maccabees real quick. You know what I want, right? Mm -hmm. Give me the book of Second Maccabees. Got it? Where's that? Should be like chapter three or something. Yep. Chapter four. Chapter four verse thirteen. Is that Se it? Second Maccabees. Uh let me see. Yes. Yes. Go ahead. Second Maccabees, chapter four and verse thirteen. Start verse twelve. Verse twelve. For he built gladly a place of exercise under the tower itself and brought the chief young men. Under his subjection. Brought the chief young men under their subjection. Read on. And made them wear a hat. Made them wear a hat. We get that today. We get that same today. The NFL draft. You get drafted, what they tell you to do? Put on a hat. The first thing they give you is a hat. Many things. Keep going. Now, such was the height of Greek fashions. Greek fashions. Read. And increase the heathenish manners. Increase of heathenish manners. Even today, heathenish manners have become customs. Heathenish manners have become the normality. Is that a word, normality? The, morali the normality of life. You can't function properly without doing your heathenish manners. Read. Through the exceeding profaneness of Jason, mm -hmm. that ungodly wretch, Read. and no high priest. Read. That the priests had no courage to serve anymore at the altar. We don't. We don't even think about God. Read. But despise the temple. Despising the temple. And remember, we read in First Corinthians three sixteen. Our bodies is now the temple of God. 
Our bodies is the temple of God. Despising the temple, read. And neglecting the sacrifices. Romans 12 and 2. Neglecting the sacrifices. Make your, make your body a living sacrifice. Denying yourself, read. Hasten to be partakers of the unlawful allowance. We hasten to be partakers of evil, read. In the place of exercise. Mm -hmm. After the game of discus. Called the called them forth. Read verse fifteen. Not setting by the honors of their fathers. Not setting by the honors of our fathers. But liking the glory of the Grecians best of all. Can't stop watching porn. We love Greek, uh, uh um, Greek customs so much that now we are addicted to them. It has become a way of life for some of us. It has become a a uh, stumbling block for some of us. <laughs> Those Greek fashions. Go back. Go back to video. Women, on the other hand, was demonstrated by the elaborateness of their costume until, in the 4th century BC, the sculptor of Praxiteles undressed Aphrodite, the goddess of love. Breasts were now on show. Greek earthenware, which was prized by the Romans even before they absorbed the Greek Empire in the 2nd century BC, showed women with dildos, tending phalluses, and lowering themselves onto suitably penetrating objects. But though the Romans appreciated Greek art and creativity, and were just as keen on pumped-up drinking parties in honour of Bacchus, their god of wine, they had very different ideas about the masculine ideal. The Romans turned a blind eye to homosexuality and some positively celebrated it. So now it, it says, it, now it went from the Greeks to the Romans. He said the Romans turned a blind eye to homosexuality and some of them partook in it. Keep going. It's obvious from the Warren Cup, a prized British Museum artifact. But the true man was a warrior and always dominant. It was thought belittling to a man, for example, to give a woman pleasure. Later in the history of the Roman Empire, with the invention of dildos and strap-ons, women were at greater liberty. Pornographic scenes uncovered in Pompeii at the world's oldest known brothel paint a rather different picture. Adorning the walls of sex cabins, which historians say were so prolific and so public they weren't even shielded by a curtain, are scenes showing the woman on top. This was the typical position. Modern sexologists suggest... So look, y'all, I want you to pay attention. They didn't have video cameras... So they drew everything. They drew depiction of porn, pornography. Uh, um, what's it called? Hieroglyphics. Hier uh, graffiti, whatever the hell you want to call it. That's how they did it. They didn't have video cameras. But let you know that this uh, custom of pornography goes all the way back to Greek and Rome. And it goes further back than that. But we talking about Greece and Rome. <laughs> which is America today. It goes all the way back, man. So when you're doing these things, you are giving, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Ambience? Ambience? Is that a word? Obeance. Obeance? Obesis. Thank you. You are giving obeisance to Greece and Rome. Give me Proverbs uh, 3 and 31. When you watching these porn videos, you are giving obeisance to Greece and Rome. You saying, thank you, Mr. White Man, for sleeping with all them little boys. Thank you, Greece. Thank you, you Romans. I appreciate y'all. Thank you for allowing me to be able to watch any porn I want. I do what I want. Go ahead, read that. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 31. Read. Envy thou not the oppressor. Envy thou not the oppressor. And choose none of his ways. And choose none of his ways. Can't do it, y'all. We cannot choose the oppressor's ways. Get, uh, did we, we read Surah 1411, right? That sounds right. Go to the book of the book. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Yes. First Corinthians 16, 15. 
First Corinthians 15. No, what did I say? 16 verse 15. First Corinthians chapter 16 verse 15. I beseech you, brethren, ye know the house of Stephanus, that it is the first fruits of Achaia, and that they have addicted. They have what? Addicted. Wait, the, let's see what they addicted themselves to. Wait. And that they have addicted themselves to the ministry they of have, the saints. They have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. They have addicted themselves to the ordinance of God. They have addicted themselves to the charity shown to their people. They have addicted themselves to the commandments, to the laws, the statutes. They have addicted themselves to praying for each other. They have addicted themselves to raising the kids, loving their wives, loving their husbands. We have addicted. That's how we should be. We should be addicted to the word of God. We should feel that uh, neglect. You know how when addicts, what's it called when they go through withdrawal? Drug withdrawal. You know when you don't get something that you've been getting every day and you addicted to it and you don't get it, that withdrawal you get, that's how we should be with the word of God. That's how we should be. We should feel like, man, something is... Man. I, I need a scripture, man. <laughs> he be itching. Uh, I need to read, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you got to be addicted to the word of God <laughs> read that <laughs> Baruch chapter 4 verse 28 read for as it was your mind to go astray from God so being returned so being returned because we went we went astray now that we have returned read seek him 10 times more seek God 10 times times more so that means we gotta make we gotta addict ourselves to the word of God we gotta let you know how we read in Matthew 5 what it says of that right of thee cast it out it's things you can do to prevent yourself from falling into that temptation put a block on your phone hell some of us want to be so hip to the game so much we got the iPhone 12 iPhone 11 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 20 21 31 we got the Note 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Hell, get your ass a flip phone. <laughs> get your ass a phone where you can't go on the web. <laughs> right. All you, right. <laughs> right. You want to type one letter, you got to click the button 10 times to get to the right letter. <laughs> do what you got to do to live. Do what you got to do to make it to the kingdom of heaven. Now what Christ said, better to enter the kingdom of heaven with one eye. You better to let it go. Right. Better to let it go. <laughs> get uh get uh wisdom of Solomon. Uh four and twelve. Get wisdom of Solomon four and twelve. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter four and verse twelve. Go ahead. For the bewitching of naughtiness. Thus obscure things that are honest, and the wandering of, a, of concupiscence doth undermine the simple mind. Read it again. For the bewitching of naughtiness. The bewitching of naughtiness. Doth obscure things that are honest. Doth obscure corrupt things that are honest. You used to love getting it in with your wife. You used to love it. That's all you thought about. I can't wait to get home, get some good loving from a wife. I can't wait to get home, get, get some good love from a husband. And now you done been bewitched by what America has allowed you to do. And now it has corrupted the thing which was honest. Now you can't find pleasure no more with your wife. Now the, the, the things that y'all used to do don't pleasure you no more. Now you want to go above and beyond. Now you want to go on top of the roof. You want to go top of the roof in a snow store with belts and chains. 
<laughs> now you want to add another woman in. You used to be a one wife man. Now you a two wife man. You used to believe in what Christ taught. One man, one woman. Now you a one man, two women. You corrupt it, man. You corrupt. You have taken the bait. Let's get let, let's get there real quick for those for you are uh, multiple wise people out there. Now get Matthew. You know I won't. Hmm. Yep. Get Matthew, chapter five and verse. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Matthew chapter nineteen and verse five. Yep. And said. For this cause, for this cause, shall a man leave father and mother? Shall a man leave father and mother and mother, and shall cleave to his wife? And shall cleave to his wife. Watch this. And they twain, they twain, shall be one flesh. Shall be one flesh. Shall be one flesh. Go to where uh, they asked him about adultery, uh, verse nine. Let me see, verse seven. Uh, yep, watch this verse 7. Read that Matthew chapter 19, verse 7. Read, they say unto him, Why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement Go ahead. and to put her away? Mm -hmm. He saith unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives. Moses, because the hardness of your heart separated to put away your wives. Read on, but from the beginning, but from the beginning, it was not so, it was not so, it was not so. It was not so. So you got to ask yourself, what is Christ telling us to do? He's telling us to reverence the beginning. Reverence the beginning. Adam and Eve, Adam had how many wives? How many wives did Adam have? Adam have two wives, three wives? He had one wife. Christ is telling you to reverence the beginning. Before you Negroes got wicked, before laws had to be made, just for you. Christ tells us, hey, you better go back to the beginning. <laughs> you better remember the beginning. In the beginning, it was not so. One man, one woman, and those two shall be one. You read that in the book of Genesis chapter 2. But I divert. Uh, go to, you read Wisdom of Solomon 4, right? Go to, let's see, we almost done. Go to the book of 1 Corinthians 15.33. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse, did I say 33? Yes, sir. Uh, let me see. Yes. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Evil communication corrupt good manners. A lot of these, and you got to stand when it says evil communication. Evil communication. Evil communication. It's a spirit to this music. It's a spirit to what you allow go through your ears. It's a spirit. This is spiritual. You watching movies. It's spiritual, man. That's why. You don't realize the the uh, message of the movie truly until you repent. <laughs> until you're dealing in the spirit of God, now you can look at a movie that you seen 10 years ago and see it totally different from 10 years ago. Like, damn, I ain't noticed that. Like, the, like uh, the movie The Matrix. I love the movie The Matrix in the world. Never understood it till I came in the truth. Never understood it. Never understood that the sister that wrote the script in which the white man stole, she knew she was Israel. Zion. Nebuchadnezzar. She knew, wake up. <laughs> she knew that the, that the world we're living in is fake until we have uh, swallowed the pill and woken up from sleep, from slumber. She knew that we were the batteries that energizes America. 
Israel. She knew that. All that is in the movie. But you don't realize it until you wake up. That's how you know it's spiritual. It's a spirit. Read verse 33 again. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. Go ahead. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Evil communication corrupts good manners. Read. Awake to righteousness. Awake to righteousness. And sin not. And do what? And sin not. Romans 13 and 4. And sin not. Romans chapter 13 and verse 4. Come on. For he is the minister of God. 13 to, to 4. Yes, sir. Yep. Go ahead. Romans chapter 13 verse 4 mm -hmm. for he is the minister of God he is the minister of God to thee for good to thee for good but if thou do that which is evil uh -huh. be afraid be afraid for for he beareth not the sword in vain uh -huh. for he is the minister of God a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil go back so we can understand this white man is designed <laughs> he is designed to punish those that sin. He is designed to punish those that transgress against God. Oh, you want to watch porn? Okay. The white man got it. The white man got it. You want to watch little boy porn? Okay. The white man got it. You want to watch bondage porn? Okay. The white man got it. You can watch a damn You can watch a woman have sex with a donkey all on the web. You can watch a man have sex with a dog on chicken <laughs> all on the web. It's got to be a trap, y'all. It's got to be a trap for something that easy to to obtain. It's got to be a, a, a what is it? It's got to be a, a trick to it. Something that easy to obtain has got to be something wrong. It's a catch. If I click on this, why am I getting a thousand spam emails now? Why is my computer now corrupted with viruses? <laughs> well, I got to take my computer to a, a laptop technician to clean all these viruses. Hey, but don't tell... Hey, don't tell my wife what you see on the computer. Just clean it up. Just wipe it clean for me. Your button's all sticky. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about why the button's sticky. Just wipe everything clean for me, and I'll do the rest. <laughs> what verse you at? First Corinthians 15 and 33. Yep. Be not deceived. Evil communications. Evil communication. Corrupt good manners. Evil communications corrupt good manners, y'all. No, nope, that's it. Evil communication corrupt good manners. What? What? Give me that uh, wisdom. We read that rhythm song already, right? Yeah, we read that. Go to uh, First Corinthians, chapter seven. First Corinthians, chapter seven, and verse one. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 1. Now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. It is good for a man not to touch a woman. Read on. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication. To avoid fornication. Watch your pornography is going into fornication. I'm going to tell you something. You relieving yourself is fornication. Fornication idolatry. Relieving yourself. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. I ain't talking about going to the bathroom and doing number one and number two. I'm talking about that Jorgen's lotion. I'm talking about those mechanical devices. You relieving yourself. Read that again. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication is fornication. Read. Let every man have his own wife. Let every man have his own wife. Brothers, if you're dealing with that, you know you're burning. Get yourself right so that you can get your wife. And stop doing that stuff. I'm going to tell you why. An effect, one of the effects of porn is erectile dysfunction. Did I say that right? Erectile dysfunction is a result of watching too much porn. 
Any of y'all didn't know that. You might want to uh, do some research on what you're doing. Brothers, if you're dealing with that, stop. Repent. Let that stuff go because when you do get married, it's going to affect your marriage. Now, you can't even get... You limp. Let me just be real, man. Brother, we all adults on here. Now you limp. Why? Because you don't use so accustomed. The dopamine uh, receptors in your brain just done been turned off from watching, from doggone watching every porn known to man. Now, your wife, when you do get a wife, now you can't find no pleasure in normal sex. Now you, now you got to go above and beyond. Now, you want two women. Now you want three women. Now you want men in the bedroom with your wife. Now you all picking up hookers. Women too. You're single, you're burning, you're, you're, you're watching these videos and 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 you you you're seeing every man on the on on the on the porn video hung like a horse. Baby leg. Every man of your porno videos got a baby leg. So, <laughs> so now, every, <laughs> it's the truth, man. So now, yo, you expect your husband to have the same attribute of these porn stars. And then when you do get married, and you go to consummate the marriage, now your ass is mad. You can't be mad at him. Stop watching porn. That's the way God made him. <laughs> Your mind has been corrupted. Stop telling it's gonna hurt y'all in the long run. Let it go. It's gonna hurt you in the long run. What verse we at? Hmm? Verse two. Uh what what I told you to read? Verse two. I'm saying what what's oh, the um avoid fornication. What's the book and chapter? Brother? Oh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 2. Thank you. Good God. <laughs> Read verse 2 again. <laughs> Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, mm -hmm. and let every woman have her own husband. Let every woman have her own husband. Read. Verse 3. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, mm -hmm. and likewise also the wife unto the husband. The wife had so it says, let the husband run up to the wife, do benevolence. All this can happen when you get married. When you get married, now you can, you know, talk to your wife, talk to your husband, and y'all can, you know, do what y'all want to do, as long as it ain't going against the laws of Vegas 18. But when you defile your mind, now it's hard for you to live a normal, righteous life. Uh, life as a married man, a married woman. Go back to the video. We almost done. Anatomical perspective, this stance is generally highly pleasurable for the woman. So perhaps Roman women enjoy themselves more than culture officially allowed. The Roman man was entitled to sex whenever and with whomever he pleased, so long as he was not a party to adultery. Slaves and prostitutes didn't count. As a slave, marriage was impossible, and by definition, you couldn't be married and be a prostitute. If a man did commit adultery, he would at the very least have to pay fines. Under some emperors, he would, as the victim of adultery, have the right to kill the offender. The only proviso was that he then divorce his wife. Officially speaking, apart from the ladies of the night, women were to remain chaste. They were a man's property, but they no doubt did go out in search of the pleasure they probably did not receive in the nuptial setting, which was envisaged only for reproduction. Roman misogyny found more extreme expression on the battlefield. When Paulinus rampaged through England in the first century AD, so the account of Tacitus goes, his men flogged Queen Boudicca and sexually assaulted her daughters. That's what they used Sex to do. Was the go to uh, Colossians. Go, go to the book of Colossians. Uh, like I said, we're almost done. F few more minutes. Give y'all a break. Uh, Colossians chapter 3. And... Yep. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 5. Mm -hmm. Mortify therefore your members 
which are upon the earth. Mortify your members, debt your members, bring them under subjection. Read. Fornication, mm -hmm. uncleanliness, inordinate affection. Inordinate affection, read. Evil concupiscence. Evil concupiscence, read. And covetousness. Go ahead. Which is idolatry. Which is idolatry. Put to death that evil sexual lust. Inordinate affection. Fornication. God says, mortify therefore your members. Put to death that evil and sexual lust. Put that stuff to death, man. Put it to death. Let it go. Kill it. Dead it. Read. Verse 6. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh in, on the children of disobedience. For which things sake for these things. God says the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. We are getting judged because of the actions that we do. We are getting judged for those things. We don't, we don't think coronavirus comes from pornography. <laughs> we don't think that the death rate from the coronavirus stems from watching porn. We don't think that. Well, we don't put them two together. We don't put them two together. We don't think that the death toll from, from coronavirus don't come from breaking the Sabbath day. We don't put them two together. But God says the wrath of God cometh upon the children of disobedience for these see, uh, for these things. For the even as we do, we get judged. Keep going. Verse 7. In the which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them. But now you also put off all these. But it says, but now you also put off all these, read. Anger, wrath, malice, mm. blasphemy, filthy communication, filthy out, communication out of your mouth. Read. Lie not one to another. Lie not, lie not one to another, read. Seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deed. Verse 10. And have put on the new man. Put on the new man. Read. Which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Which is renewed in knowledge. Give me that Malachi. Give me the knowledge. That is renewed in knowledge. Read. Malachi chapter 2 and verse 7. Come on. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge and they should seek and they should seek the law at his mouth. And they shall seek the law. That knowledge is the law. Go back to Colossians 3 and 10. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 10. Mm -hmm. And now, I'm sorry, and have put off, put on the new man. Which, Read it again. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 10. Go ahead. And have put on the new man. Put on the new man. Which is renewed in knowledge. Which is born again in the laws of God. After the image of him that created him. After the image of God. God says you got to put on that new man. You got to put on that new man. Um, give me the book of James chapter 1 and verse 12. And then we're going to do about two more scriptures and then we off. James chapter 1 and verse 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Read. For when he is tried, For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. Brothers and sisters, what you got to understand is we all go through temptation. Watch this. I'll even show y'all something. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 16. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 16. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels. For verily Christ took not on him the nature of angels. Read. But he took on him the seed of Abraham. He took on him a human body, human form. Seed of Abraham made from a mother and a father. Read. Wherefore in all things. In all things. Read. It behooved him. It behooved him. It was best that he what? To be made like unto his brethren, 
that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest. It says it behooved it was best that Christ was made like us from a mother and a father so that what? That he might be a merciful, a merciful and faithful high priest. You understand why it says so that he may be merciful. You understand why? Why would Christ have to be made like us so that he can be merciful? It's going to tell you. Read on. That he, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest. Go ahead. In the things pertaining to God. Go ahead. To make reconciliation. To make reconciliation, read. For the sins of the people. For in that he himself has suffered being tempted. Being tempted. He is able to succor them that are tempted. Go to jump to chapter 4 verse 15. It says Christ was tempted just like us. That's why he's able to be merciful. He said, well, yeah, I, I know what y'all going through, but watch this. Hebrews 4, 15. Read that. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 15. Uh -huh. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the, mm -hmm. with the feelings of our infirmities. The feelings of our temptations, of our weak points. Read on. But was in all points. Was in all points. Tempted like as we are. Y'all hear that? It say Christ was tempted just how we tempted. What we tempted with, Christ was tempted with. Read that again. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15. Read. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. Christ, he know what we going through. He understands it. Read. But was in all points. Was in all points. Come on. Tempted like as we are. Now watch this next part. Yet without sin. And Christ didn't give in to it. Christ didn't give in to it. Christ was tempted how we was tempted. And he didn't fall into temptation. Give me that. Go to John. We almost done. Go to the book of John. Uh, chapter 2 and verse 1. The book of John, chapter 2 and verse 1. And the third day, there was a marriage in Cana. Of First John, oh. 2 and 1. First John, sorry about that. First John, chapter 2 and verse 1. Come on. My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father. So the Bible says, if any man sin, we are able to be forgiven through Christ. Through Christ. Through Christ. Read on. Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins. He is the propitiation. I know I'm probably saying it wrong. For our sin. Read on. And not for ours only, mm -hmm. but also for the sins of the whole world. Talk about Israel. Read. And hereby. We do know that we know him mm -hmm. if we keep his commandments. If we do what? If we keep his commandments. So the Bible said we know we know Christ if we keep his commandments. Read on. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments. Keepeth not Christ's commandments. Is a liar. Is a liar. Come on. And the truth is not in him. Read on. Is that it? Uh, hold on. I'm looking for something. Uh, Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20 Read. I am crucified with Christ uh -huh. nevertheless I live yet not it says I am crucified with Christ nevertheless I live talking about that old man that old man died with Christ read Nevertheless, I live. I live. Yet not I. Yet not I. But Christ liveth in me. That's that new man. You're supposed to crucify that old man, kill that old man, and be renewed in the spirit of Christ. Read. And the life which I now live mm -hmm. in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. I live by Christ, read. Who loved me. Who loved me so much that he died so that we could come back to the Father, read. And gave himself for me. Verse 21. I do not frustrate the grace of God. I do not frustrate the grace of God. We don't know when our grace going to run out. God forbid our grace runs out while we're watching porn. Can you imagine that? 
Imagine that. Well, you can't imagine. You'd be dead. But, but just think about it. Your wife coming to the room, uh, you on the toilet for five hours. Your wife, they got to break down the door to watch you with a laptop on your lap with Jurgis lotions on the sink. Just imagine that. All of your, I'm telling you, all of your righteousness, all of your, your works will be quested now. Like, whoa, what the hell? What the hell is this? They got to do a wellness check because you ain't been coming to the Sabbath. You ain't been doing fly missions. They got to break down the door to find you laptop all sticky. Your last, <laughs> your last uh, uh, works was doing evil. We don't know when our grace going to run out, man. We don't know when our grace going to run out. So for those that's dealing with this, just repent. Repent and stop doing it. Find ways to uh, deal with that temptation. Because the most I say, he gives you doors out. He gives you ways out. He leaves open doors. He leaves doors open for you to get out. How I know? Because I know because I've been through it. And all praise to the most high. All praise to the most high. Now I'm able to guide brothers and sisters through them doors. Through them doors of uh of uh safety. All right. Uh last script. Uh let me see. Uh go to let me see if it's James. Oh, let me find it. Last scripture, y'all. We done. Uh, Second Thessalonians chapter one and verse seven. Second Thessalonians chapter one and verse seven. And to you who are troubled, rest with us, when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with His mighty angels. It says, "Those that are troubled, rest with us." Rest with your brothers and sisters that have already dealt with it and have overcame it and still enduring and plan on enduring to the end. If you trouble, if there's something that's troubling you, go get counsel from your leadership. Go get counsel. Don't be the don't don't feel like you're the only one going through this. Don't feel like you will be ashamed. Hold that. Hold that. Because now I just thought of something. Uh go to the book of Sirach. Chapter 4 and verse 21. Sirach, or Ecclesiasticus, chapter 4 and verse 1. 4 and 21. 4 and verse 21. For there is a shame that bringeth sin. There is a shame that bringeth sin. And there is a shame which is glory and grace. There is a shame that bringeth sin. That shame is being so shameful not to ask for help. And there is a shame which is glory and grace. There's a shame that's asking for help but feeling so shame, but it brings grace to you. Don't be ashamed. You you know, if you want to talk to your counselor, your counselor of a, of a thousand, like you're reading Sirach, you do that. Or, hell, if you don't feel comfortable doing that, pull up videos. We got a million uh, YouTube videos of Israel now in the Christ teaching about dealing with pornography. Teach about dealing with fornication. You, you pull them up, you study them, you write down the scriptures, you apply them. You make yourself, um, you hold yourself accountable. You fast, pray, do the things that are worthy, bring forth fruit that's meat for repentance. Go back to Thessalonians. Oh, you know what? Hold, uh, scratch that. Go to uh, 2 Ezra 7, 21, and we out. 2 Ezra 7, 21. 2 Ezra chapter 7 and verse 21. Great. For God hath given straight commandments. God gave us straight commandments. Straight means right to the point. Easy to be understood. Like Paul said, the simplicity of Christ. Read. For God has given straight commandment mm -hmm. to such as came. To such as came. Read on. What they should do to live. What they should do to live. Even as they came. And what they should observe to avoid punishment. And what we should observe to avoid 
punishment. The Lord gave us the, the blueprint of life. The Lord gave us the blueprint of life. We just got to follow the blueprint. And we may stumble at the blueprint. You know, there's times where you can't read a blueprint properly. What you do? You go to your foreman. <laughs> you go to the one above you to help you read it. If you fall at, you fell at reading that blueprint, ask for forgiveness. Go to Christ. Ask for forgiveness so the Father can forgive you. Read on. Verse 22. Nevertheless, they were not obedient unto him, mm -hmm. but spake against him and imagined vain things. Read. And deceive themselves by their wicked deeds. And that's what we doing today. We deceiving ourselves by our wicked deeds because we ain't being put to death that very moment. Read. And said of the Most High that he is not and knew not his ways. Verse 24. But his laws have, the, have they despised mm -hmm. and denied his covenants. In his statutes have they not been faithful uh -huh. and have not performed his works. There ought to. Get Sirach 2 and verse 5. Ecclesiasticus chapter 2 and verse 5. For gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. We don't. Believe in him. Believe in God. And he will help thee. And he will what? And he will help thee. He will what? And he will help thee. And he will what? And he will help thee. Believe in God. Have faith in the Lord, and he will help you. He will help you endure, man. Endure through this captivity. He will help you. Read on. Order thy way aright and trust in him. Order thy way aright and trust in him. Read on. Ye that, ye that fear the Lord. Ye that fear the Lord. Wait for his mercy. Wait for his mercy. And go not aside lest ye fall. And go not aside lest ye fall. So all praise to the most high. Brothers and sisters. Pray y'all glean something from this class this morning on the Sabbath day. You're dealing with this type of spirit. Let's deal with it, y'all. Let's deal with it because I don't know. I, I know y'all see what's going on in the news. I know y'all seeing what's America is crumbling. America is crumbling, man. And it's a beautiful sight in the eyes of the righteous. I'm sitting back and just laughing, man. Just like, oh my goodness. I can't believe I'm living in such a time. It's so beautiful. Better the time now to get yourself right. Don't wait. You see what's going on. The stress can have any time. I seen something on Facebook where they said Trump, Trump might just press the button. <laughs> oh, the hell with y'all. Oh, oh, y'all want to cheat me? The hell with Biden. Press the damn button. <laughs> hey, and we got to be ready, y'all. We got to be ready. All right? So I praise the most. Happy Sabbath, Israel. Most high Christ bless. With that, we say shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.